campaign. We are honored to welcome back Commissioner David E. Hudson. He's the National Commander of the Salvation Army and he's joined by Cowboys owner Jerry Jones this morning along with his daughter Charlotte Jones Anderson, Executive VP and Chief Brand Officer of America's team, the Dallas Cowboys. Good morning everyone and Commissioner Hudson, let's start with you. We know the Red Kettle campaign is vital all year round. It affects so many people. Why is it so important, especially at this time of year? Well, you know, it's uh, this time of year is uh, uh, that, uh, I'm sorry, my brain, my brain went silent, <laughs> but, you know, this, uh, during this time of year is a time of giving, and uh, what happens is uh, we give to our families, and, and I think there's an awareness of the needs of others, and so the Christmas kettle is a reminder of that, and we're so appreciative of the Cowboys, and uh, the, the fact that they highlight the kettles and the need uh, to raise the dollars. This year's goal is $150 million, and that's going to help us serve 23 million people in the United States this next year. So the kettle is important, so we, we encourage people, ask people, don't walk by the kettle uh, without dropping something in it. It's an incredible goal, incredible cause. Charlotte, we see the kettles all over here in New York City. We all have such fond memories of Zeke jumping into the kettle two years ago. And it's really after the Dallas Star, the red kettles become almost a symbol of the Dallas Cowboys. Why is that partnership with the Salvation Army so significant to this team and to your family? You know, you said it the best. It certainly has become a symbol, just like the star to the Dallas Cowboys. This is our 22nd year to kick off the National Red Kettle Campaign. And when we first had the opportunity to partner with the Salvation Army, we knew that we could use the visibility and the interest that surrounds the Cowboys on Thanksgiving Day and partner with an incredible entertainer to hopefully inspire millions of Americans that are watching to give to the Salvation Army. And we are so excited to be doing it one more time and to have Megan Trainer here, that she's going to be oh, behind yeah. me on the stage. And Kay, you will love this. Kay, she's going to be mm -hmm. surrounded by 65 female performers. So mm. this is a women rock really? show. So we're very excited about it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Love mm. that. That's awesome. I'm a huge Megan Trainer fan myself. Though. You're all about that okay. bass. I'm all about that bass. Uh, <laughs> okay. Jerry, Jerry, uh, we got to talk Cowboys here. They've been a mainstay on Thanksgiving. We're coming in red hot with two wins in a row. But I go back to all these different turkey days, and whether it be Romo at quarterback or Aikman or even Jason Garrett, what is your fondest Cowboys Thanksgiving Day memory as owner of the Dallas Cowboys? Well, it really has to do with the way we pay tribute to the Salvation Army. Uh, but it uh, has had participation, for instance, Aikman. Uh, people like Daryl Johnston, people like Michael Irvin, as far back as that, literally at halftime, while the team was in the dressing room, would come out and put money in the red kettle uh, to give an example. You know, the Salvation Army thing is unbelievable. They have 60,000 workers across the country. The money stays in every city. And it's a great opportunity for the NFL and for our players to really give back and say, hey, we all are blessed, we all got a lot of visibility, there's a lot of interest in what we're doing, yeah, let's use it and put it in the hands of the Salvation Army. That's awesome, all right, now Jerry, let's talk turkey, baby. The Cowboys, <laughs> they were struggling, just to be honest. You guys have won two straight, you're just one game behind your opponent tomorrow. Um, the Redskins are you, the, the opponent you're facing. What's the biggest key to keeping this momentum going? Because I know you like to keep it real. And I don't want you to be political right now. Let's talk some football, baby. <laughs> Give it to me. How can the Cowboys well, keep this well, thing going? I'll get about as real as you want to get. This chair is sitting in the back of the end zone. Okay? I want that Cooper or that Zeke to land where this chair is about four Ooh. times. Okay and that'll help us against the white red skin. But seriously, seriously, we have, a, we, have, uh, we have the youngest team in the NFL. And this team has a chance to do on a game-by-game -game basis and not be the same team. Success is a learned habit. And when you look in that mirror and you've had some success, you can build from that. We've got a great offensive lineman. We've got a quarterback that I really do believe in. 
If you want to know when you got one, is when everybody's doubting him and he still steps out there and makes a play. We've got a great running back in Zeke and our defense is coming on. So you're talking about a proud papa here. I really think we've got a chance to uh, go from here and be better and better and better. That's and, exactly what I wanted, yeah. Jerry. <laughs> and that defense is no joke. We'll talk a little bit more about that offense, sir, because you recently compared the Cowboys to the Rams' high-flying offense, saying, quote, I don't think it's a reach to think maybe we can approach that kind of productivity. So after watching that game Monday night, we have to get your thoughts and whether or not you still agree. Well, um, uh, I think I'm going to go back to Emmett Smith, Aikman, Michael Irvin. Uh, Emmett had a lot of his runs, and he wasn't touched for the first three or four yards. It's because Aikman and Irvin had them backed off. And they knew if they didn't stay back, then Aikman and Irvin and Novacek would take them right down the field. Well, Cooper has done that for us. We got to keep them backed off. When we do, then Zeke can basically have the kind of days we want him to have as a, um, uh, as a running back. So it's a balanced thing. It always has been. Uh, we won't play the same kind of game that you saw the other night on Monday Night Football. What a game. But our game is going to be a more balance between the run and the pass, but you got to get them both going to make it work. Our defense is better than any defense we've had in the last few years as well. Awesome stuff. Charlotte, I got to ask you because we've got a big audience, they're loyal viewers. If they want to volunteer, but they're not going to the actual game and they're at home on their couch on Thursday or any day of the year, what can they do to help and make a difference for the Salvation Army? Well, probably most importantly, if you're out during the holidays, put your money in the red kettle. That is where it's going to go the farthest. That's where it's going to help the most people and make the greatest impact. You can also grab an angel off that tree and provide a Christmas for a child who would never have one. It's about supporting the Salvation Army, and it's about your money doing the most good. So hopefully they'll join our effort and be inspired on Thanksgiving and get out and help the Salvation Army. Well, listen, we appreciate you guys joining us. Thank you so much for what you do, not just on the field, but off the field. And once again, thank you for what you did during the draft while we were down there in Dallas. You guys are so special, not just to the Cowboys, but to the entire country and what it means for the NFL. Thank you. Great. Thank Thanks, you guys. guys. Happy